day training vlog you're gonna see all day of my training today done it in the past you guys liked it so today is a Wednesday meaning that today I'm gonna start off the morning the first session is gonna be a run so I'm gonna run five and a half miles to the Muay Thai gym and I'm gonna go ahead and do some Muay Thai training after that later on today we'll hit the weight room to do some lower body heavy efforts training so follow along let's make it happen all right so for the first training session five and a half mile run Cadence is gonna be high and the intensities are gonna be slightly lower, but not too low. So I'm not going to zone two or zone one even, obviously then I'll be walking. And this is gonna be a good pace. So I'm gonna stick between 70 to even 75% of my maximal heart rate. I wanna maintain that heart rate range with a solid cadence. With the cadence being 180 to 185 steps per minute, the high cadence is going to yield a reduce of injury, which basically means that when you have that high cadence, it's going to be quicker and shorter strides. So that'll reduce the impact force of your legs, which again, potentially leads or lowers the risk of injuries and stress fractures and shin splints and so on and so forth. So the goal is to land midfoot, maintain that high cadence and maintain that heart rate range throughout the entire duration of the actual run. Now, the reason for a high cadence run, right? one, like I said, is gonna reduce the risk of injury. Two, it's gonna improve my running efficiency, right? Quicker steps lead to more efficient running form and it encourages landing in the midfoot. So that's going to help me, one, have a less heel strike and two, propel my body forward with less effort. So the pace control and maintaining a consistent cadence can help regulate that pace. Every time that I'm running, I'm trying to make sure that I'm maintaining a solid posture. My head's not shifting from side to side. I'm keeping my shoulders back and I have a slight lean on my torso as I'm going to run forward. Another reason why we want to have a higher cadence is because it increases our speed. So for some runners, increasing cadence can be a way to increase speed without necessarily exerting more effort which again is what I wanna do. Now I'm a 205 pound athlete, so I have to make sure that I'm maintaining a solid efficient cadence, my posture is leveled, and I'm breathing efficiently, mainly through the diaphragm. So diaphragmatic breathing is gonna be another thing that I'm focusing on as I'm going to run throughout this uh, time frame. So there it is. Now, let me get after it. Let's go. All about the work, dedicate yourself to a cause, keep pushing forward, make it a routine. You don't need motivation when it becomes second nature. Let's go. So session number two, King's Muay Thai. We're gonna start off with five minutes on the heavy rope. Skylar's here, so we're gonna do some pads, probably do five rounds of pads and then I'll do some bag work drills. So I'll go over all the details, but let me get after it. Still staying crisp, even though we're getting ready for the rough. Still gotta keep these hands, these feet, knees, elbows, ready to go at all times. Plus it's good conditioning. And Skylar's the man to do it, so. All right, we ready to rock? Let's do it. Let's get it. So we're doing uh, first three rounds, we're doing tie pad. Round four, we'll do some mitt work with a, a focus on elbows. And then round five, we'll, we'll, we'll get some work in with the low, low kick shield. Kick. 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 Up, 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 up
So, the, the origin story behind the thumbs up. Oh, the thumbs up, yeah, yeah. So currently the shop is called uh, Shorty's Barbershop and Co. But when we first opened it, uh, you know, jugging around, uh, I cut my thumb. I had a partial amputation there. Uh, getting the floor, literally the floor that we that I was cutting was probably right around in this section right here. Um, obviously we updated the floor now, uh, but it was, we had like wood uh, uh, laminate floor. And I was doing a cut and the, I got myself with the uh, the circular saw, you know, the top saw. So, what you do? What happened when? So we called it thumbs up. I'm sorry, that so ended up the name to this thumbs up barbershop for a while, and we upgraded, and now it's shorties. But that's that's that. Lost a finger opening this spot. Blood, so what do you say? Blood, sweat, tears. That's it. And limbs. Yeah, and limbs. And digits. Digits. <laughs> Yeah, man, so that's, I mean, when did you do that documentary? That was, uh, you were, like I said, that was, you were still fighting? And, yeah, that, that was 2010. We launched it, I think we launched it in 2010 because I was, I opened the gym up in 2011. DFP? Yeah, like the first one. Okay. So yeah, it was probably, oh, probably about 2010. They followed me for a year. <laughs> What's that? Oh, for the, for the, oh, for the, shit, look. the documentary? Oh, shit, look. I found it, look at it. Look, this is Al Gilbert Group, outside the Kennedy, hard work, dedication, loyalty, and sacrifice. So today's session is going to be a heavy efforts, lower body session. It's Wednesday, so we're going to be building up the intensity, but first doing some warm up and mobility drills just to get my hips, my ankles, my knees feeling good. From there, I'm going to go ahead and do some lower level plyos and then into some jumps. I'm using the box jumps today because I want to limit the force impact on my joints just because of the run that I did this morning. Less force coming down, less pounding on the joint. So first did a just a standard counter movement box jump. We did two sets of five repetitions. Then I did a single leg 
box jump with a counter movement five each side then from there did a lateral box jump into a 90 degree turn on both sides two sets of five each after the jumps went right into front squats using the duffalo bar the duffalo bar is 55 pounds just without weight so I worked my way up to just a heavy triple wanted to go heavy enough to where i would get some strength stimulus uh, but also wanted to leave some in the tank so went right into the b stance rdls with a stiff bar that really primarily is just for the hinge variation i like the b stance because i can load the front leg do somewhat of a unilateral exercise in a hinge variation so we are working the posterior chain because we're going from anterior to posterior from the front squat to the hinge so that was three sets of six each side with 225 nothing crazy on the weight we did an rir of about three so again keeping it in a strength range but not maximal intensity after that did another single leg variation but this one was more for an acceleration phase of the uh, movement or the acceleration phase of the position so a knees over toes style rear foot elevated split squat with the kettlebells in both hands three sets of six each side again an rir of about two to three and then i did the sled drag variation i wanted to get an acceleration out of the starting position and then pull with my hamstrings to keep it going i also threw on the rucksack from go ruck so i have 45 pounds in there dry and then i have 205 pounds on the sled so the five rounds of 50 yards with a 90 second break in between, just again to build up some general physical preparedness and also get ready for what we have going further with Ruck 150. If you guys didn't know, I'm getting ready for a 150 mile Ruck March for the troops on Memorial Day. We're also gonna be going and raising money for the Pipe Hitters Foundation. So if you wanna get involved, if you are a military vet or not and want to help and donate or just be a part of it, let us know in the description down below. You can sign up there and let me know in the comments too as well. That's the workout. Enjoy. All right, so that's a wrap for today. It's Wednesday, so primarily I don't do any real long strenuous rucking, but you saw the run. So for the most part, you don't have to ruck every day to get better at rucking. For me, my limiter is going to be conditioning, right? So from a weight training perspective and from a conditioning perspective, if I have a limiter, I'm gonna try to plug that gap. So doing more running and cardio-based workouts like swimming and biking and all of that is gonna be helpful for the ruck itself. And then obviously doing your weight training, doing your upper body work. Today, I finished off with the ruck on my back. It's only 45 pounds, but we did a sled drag just to keep it somewhat simulated for what we're gonna have to do in May. So there it is. You guys like this style of video, seeing the daily training vlog and a little bit of my extracurricular activity, trying to get my hair cut. Make sure you let me know, hit the comments down below and thank you for following along and subscribing. I appreciate it. See you guys next time. Peace. Bye.